Good evening, Excellencies. Um, I hope you can hear me clearly. A very good evening to you. And thank you so much uh, for joining us. And um, I think before I start with the program and the welcoming, it's quite important that we start with a word of prayer. And I see here we have uh, Miss Jane Egbo to open with a word of prayer for us. Uh, Excellency, if you may, we'll be very grateful. Good evening, Your Excellencies and all, all Excellencies this in the house this evening. May we have a word of prayer tonight. We're in prayer in Jesus' name. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we want to thank you for a day like this. We want to thank you for bringing us to a new day, a new beginning, a new session in the life of GBR and Global Fund for Jesus. Father, we pray that everything we are going to do will be to your precept in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the gift of air, for friendship, for families, for neighborhood, for businesses, for the body of Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, we thank you for the air we breathe in. It's not by power that we are alive this day, but your grace has kept us the opposition for us in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for all the participants, for all the speakers tonight, for Lena, Professor Celico, and all the organizers. We pray that your grace will be sufficient for them. You go with them, you give them, sure you give them, you give them in the mighty name of Jesus. To be able to hear us arise in the name of Jesus. Above all, all glory and adoration be described back to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Present. I thank you for the good work, GB, touching families, touching lives, touching homes, touching nations. Thank you for being that that Jesus would have done if he was here on earth. We return all the glory to you in the mighty name of Jesus. As we are about to start, give us listening ears, give us the mind to understand, and even as we get, may we be the doers of the word. Not here, but to your in mighty name of Jesus. All these are many more that we have not been able to us. But you know they are relevant in our families, in our businesses, even in global business roundtable. We bring the past in our life and Jesus. Thank you for the hampers. Thank you for everything. All the departments, the choir, the organizers, those who are in charge of communication. We pray that it shall be well with each and every one of us. They call the glory and adoration in that wonderful name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, uh, Excellency. We, we really appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate that word of prayer as we start this program this evening. Um, I want to welcome you all and say thank you so much for joining us this evening, depending on where you are. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I'm currently uh, sitting in Johannesburg, South Africa. Uh, so it is evening, it is 7 p.m. Um, Central African time. So depending on where you are, uh, greetings and salutations to you. Uh, we are very grateful to have you this particular um, evening or morning, depending on where you are. And I think it's quite important for us uh, um, with this uh, particular topic that we are going to deal with this evening. But I think before I get into that uh, specific topic, it's quite important um, to go through um, or rather welcoming people that are joining us for the very first time. I think it's very important to have that word of welcome and to ensure that if you are here for the first time, we pray and hope that this is not the last time you are joining us. Uh, these are the GBR international sessions, but we'll give you a glimpse in not so long of what uh, GBR is about. Um, thank you for each and every one of you in the different countries that you are currently um, and that you're joining us live. We are very grateful uh, for you to give us the time and the attention. I always say it's an honor to be listened to and for you to take the time out of your day, out of your evening, um, just to pay attention to some of these words that we have for you tonight, some of the insights that will be shared here tonight by the honorable panelists. Um, we're actually quite excited. Um, uh, regarding this particular topic, especially at this day and age, how it's such a huge uh, pressing factor for us. Now, with that said, I think it's going to be very important that um, we give as well a glimpse of the Global Business Roundtable. If you 
you have no idea about the Global Business Roundtable, who we are, what we do, and why we do what we do. It's going to be very important for you to kind of get an idea of this organization. And I think it will paint a picture as we lay the foundation tonight before we get into the matters that are quite pressing that we want to discuss. Um, I'm just going to ask our media team to just share the video on screen about, uh, it's just a three minute video, short video, that kind of gives you a glimpse or an overview of the Global Business Round Table. And I think we can take it from there. Media team, if you may, I appreciate it very much. The Global Business Roundtable has a God-given mission to focus on the holistic development of people in line with God's plan for His Kingdom. The aim of the organization is to help members to grow spiritually, intellectually, to grow their networks and to participate in trade and investment opportunities, to also participate in mentorship and coaching programs and to expand their businesses. Our organization focuses on the holistic development of its members and invests its time and resources in developing people in key sectors, including the spiritual growth and development, which is critical to ensure and to foster strong moral values and, uh, and ethics, which we want to inculcate in all our leaders and standards so that we could contribute to the uh, production of a new breed of leaders that will shape and transform Africa and the rest of the globe. Since its launch in Johannesburg, South Africa in 2009, the Global Business Roundtable has impacted thousands of lives around the world. Ten years after its launch, this God-focused organization has a presence in more than 80 countries in the following regions. The Southern African Development Community, East Africa, West Africa, Central Africa, North Africa, Asia, Europe, North America, South America, and the Caribbean. GBR has strategic initiatives, programs, and platforms that facilitate growth and opportunities for its members. This is done through the global and local events such as World Congress, Prayer Camp, and the Thought Leader Summit, Women of Character Summit, Future Leader Summit, Trade and Investment Exhibitions, and GBR Sessions. These events create an environment for our members and partners to meet, interact, and create relationships that will develop their businesses and lives holistically. GBR also has a TV show called A New Thing, which seeks to educate, inform, challenge, empower and inspire one to live their best lives in line with God's purpose by bringing in several experts from various fields and sectors together. The Global Business Roundtable believes that informed and engaged leaders can make a positive change in the world. The GBR Academy was established primarily to address leadership capacity within the Global Business Roundtable leadership structures. The GBR platform is an online system that exists to create opportunities for personal and professional development. It is poised to further facilitate trade and investment opportunities across nations and industries for big business. For more information on our organization, please visit www.globalbusinessroundtable.com or contact us on plus 2711-242-8000. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. And I think that kind of helped to give you an idea of GVR and what GVR is about. I think as you can tell from the video, and um, that uh, established in the year 2009, but already in over 80 countries. And the aim in the next five years is to cover the earth. So if you're not yet a member of GBR in your country, please get in touch with us to find out how you can be a part of this amazing initiative, this amazing vision that is God given. And I think most importantly, it's not just for our benefit, but for the whole earth. And most importantly, to ensure the holistic development of all sectors of society. Nevertheless, uh, before I belabor the point, it's quite important for me to touch on the topic we're going to talk about today. And I think, well, it's quite interesting about it because I think this becomes my bread and butter. I sit now in, in, in the office of Sakumoto Group, of which uh, the GBR is headquartered, and I sit in the office of marketing. So that means this topic is quite close to my heart. This is something that I do on a daily, but I think most importantly for the different people around the world, um, it's very, very critical for me to touch on what this topic is about, just to give you a glimpse, because I think before we move to social media, it's important for us to acknowledge the transitions that have been there for a couple of years, especially the evolving media when we say social right now. And I think you look at a couple of centuries ago, 
especially when you look at the first invention of putting ink on paper gave us uh, the newspaper that we have, which is still quite uh, predominant today, uh, that we are still reading newspapers. And then they, it started to evolve with ink getting better and printing digitally, and even the quality of paper getting a little bit better. And we started having magazines that are a little bit more glossier, right? And we started liking that and print moved from within the home or wherever it is that you bought it and it started moving on the outdoors we started having what we have billboards and today when you drive on the highways in your cities wherever you are in your country you most likely encounter a lot of billboards then we invented of course the transmission of audio sound over waves and we had radio and every advert that you heard the news that you heard engage a lot of engagement uh, started being on radio now and radio moved to mobile moved into our cars etc and instead of audio only, we invented the video as well. Then came in the television. You can see with the transition that the media in and of itself is evolving over the years. But I think what's quite interesting where we sit today, uh, each and every one of us has a cell phone in their hand, most likely a smartphone. And some may be watching actually this international session from their smartphones. And when we start looking into the future, uh, probably Master Andre would know about that. We start looking at, um, augmented reality and how we'll put on headphones and be in a different world. But today's focus is not on augmented reality. I just want to bring this to your attention. As we speak this evening, or if it's morning where you are, there are 6.6 .6 billion people around the globe that have a smartphone. That is around 83% of the global population. And that statistic is quite mind blowing for me because it says, somebody would most likely have a smartphone even when they wouldn't even own a computer in their homes, even in the poorest regions of the world, a smartphone has become more accessible. And through smartphones, we have access to social media. Through smartphones, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we're on LinkedIn, we're on Snapchat, we're on TikTok. I mean, the list goes on. But what's important is that almost over 80% of the globe have this. And I think it's quite powerful and um, that we see statistics like this, it tells us that social media is almost in everyone's reach. And in fact, it has become so powerful that in just over a year ago, the term social media manager was not even a job that existed, right? But today someone literally puts on their CVs and applies for the role of social media manager that tells you how powerful this role is. And I think that tells you that this particular field, this particular tool of communication has become so integral in our world that we cannot overlook it. Now, why is this important? I, I, I head up marketing for not just Sakumoto, but GBR and GFFJ. And today, there is no marketing strategy without a social media strategy. Whenever you write a marketing strategy, it's a must to involve social media. Why? That is most likely the first place. There's a 90% chance that somebody, the first time they hear about it in 2022, they'll hear about it on social media, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, you name it. They'll be scrolling through their phone and something will pop up that notifies them about something. And it's only then that they'll most likely decide to buy a newspaper to check the headlines, listen to the radio, watch the headline news on TV. But their first point of contact is that little device they have in their hand. And through that, whenever we market anything, social media becomes critical. So what are we discussing today? Um, so I don't take too much time. Today we are discussing how do we use this tool, which is social media, to advance the kingdom of God. We are kingdom-minded. We are founded on kingdom principles. And I think it's quite important that even as the world continues to innovate, and there are a lot more tools that will keep coming, we do not sideline those tools and say, these are tools of the enemy, these are tools of the devil. But we find ways on how to utilize that for the advancement of the kingdom of God. And boy, I think you must be glad that I'm not the one dealing with that topic today because we have a panel here of speakers that I'm going to be introducing to you. We have three panelists from um, Nigeria, South Africa, and Kenya that are going to enlighten us through you know, their presentations and that are going to be insightful for us that I believe at the end of this um, will walk away much better than we came. And I think it's quite important for you to, make, to take the notes that you want. There will be a question and answer session at the end. So I think at this particular point, let's just give them the time 
to enlighten us on this particular topic and how can we use this tool to ensure that we are advancing the kingdom of God. And firstly, I want to start here with uh, His Excellency, uh, Mr. Uh, Tayo Olusundi. I'm quickly just going to read his bio and he's going to be our first panelist and he's going to have exactly 20 minutes. I'm going to try my best to ensure that we keep uh, to time because I know that we could go on and on there. The, it, it's such a multifaceted topic that we could talk about it forever. But I think it's quite important for us to get the glimpse of what is it we're trying to convey as far as the topic is concerned so that we can engage uh, at a much later stage. So Mr. Tayo here is the co-founder and executive director of uh, Mind the Gap in Nigeria. It's a project-based strategic skill development, job creation, and social entrepreneurship and incubation platform. And he has all, over 20 years combined experience in human resource management, software development and usability, uh, public policy formulation, advocacy and implementation, corporate social investment management across uh, consulting, banking, software development, social and public sectors. Uh, Mr. Tayo is currently a lead partner on the Google Digital Skills Program, hashtag Grow with Google, and also the co-chair of the ANDE West Africa Talent Learning Hub. He's also a member of the National Youth Investment Fund, uh, the focal group of which he's a board member of the Commonwealth Youth Program, and over 15 social enterprises, which includes uh, Slam to Schools Africa, Access Drive, Crystal Lens, uh, Prev Health Nigeria, Neighborhood Study Center and Remedial Education, Digital Moms, Heads Up Africa, Slampreneur, Smart City Africa, Edu Center, Ivy Lead Academy, and others. As you can tell, uh, the man has a lot of accolades under his name. And lastly, you know, he has quite a personal mandate to raise 1 million active youth economic agents which are generation leaders. And he's currently collaborating with other strategic stakeholders to build an intergenerational leadership platform. That is genleaders.ng. And that will uh, aggregate and mobilize the collective intelligence of upwardly mobile and discerning Nigerians locally and in the diaspora to remove impediment against the development of strategic sectors in our communities like education, health, empowerment, cloud sourcing solutions as well, manpower and funds to build the Nigeria of our dream, which is hashtag ground up across the 774 local governments, leveraging digital skills, social enterprises, and agile methodologies. Excellency, Mr. Tayo Olosunde, your 20 minutes starts now. Please enlighten us, sir. Mr. Tayo, are you there? Now let's quickly check in the participants if Mr. Tayo is available. If not, we'll quickly move on to the next panelist. Okay, I'm not seeing Mr. Tayo in, in the panelists here, so it's okay. I think I am going to take this opportunity to move on to our next panelist. And I think if Mr. Tayo joins us at a later stage, you'll be more than happy to to give him that chance and that 20 minutes um, to give us his presentation. So currently, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to introduce to you from South Africa, uh, Her Excellency, Ms. Ayanda. And Ms. Ayanda is the founder of Ilibo African Group, a business media and art solutions emporium, specializing in strategy and execution systems and processes. Um, she has over 20 years of industry experience. Uh, Ms. Ayanda has worked in the mining and property media sector with accolades and awards to show. And as a children's ministry practitioner currently serving in the Methodist Church of Southern Africa, she believes in investing time and resources towards the welfare and development of children and youth. She's a creative at heart. And Ms. Ayanda has founded, has coached and supported many upcoming media and business creatives and continues to coach and teach various skills, including business etiquette, digital acumen, creative writing, publishing, and editing of manuscripts. Lastly, 
He's passionate about media, branding and service excellence and focuses her work with churches and Christian organizations in those two areas. So Excellency, please enlighten us. We are honored to have you tonight and the platform is yours. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Your Excellency, uh, the program director for this evening. Um, let me, first of all, just do a quick sound check. I believe that I am absolutely audible and uh, everything is fine, correct? Crystal clear. Fabulous stuff. So thank you so much once again for the opportunity uh, to join uh, the prestigious panel uh, of speakers for our conversation this evening. I would like before we even get into the matter of the day just to acknowledge uh, His Excellency the convener of the Global Business Roundtable, uh, Professor um, Selego, as well as the global leadership of uh, the GBR. I also would like to uh, acknowledge my fellow, fellow panelists, and I spent the better part of the day practicing, uh, and I sure hope that I'm getting the pronunciations correctly, Your Excellencies, uh, His Excellency Tayo Olusande, as well as His Excellency Rem Aguko. Um, I'm really, really just so honored to be sharing this platform uh, with you. Your Excellencies, the, the conversation that we are having this evening, um, I think is one that uh, should probably be given a lot of airtime um, in business circles, in the church um, and in any place uh, that carries uh, social capital and in any place that carries uh, some kind of social standing. So I'm very excited that we are having this conversation. And we are asking a simple question uh, this evening. How can social media be used to advance the kingdom of God? Uh, first, let's take an overview of social media and perhaps understand, you know, what is social media? I think, uh, Program Director, you gave us uh, quite an elaborate historical um, trajectory of where we have come from in terms of communication and where we have and where we are possibly going and where we are at right now. And I think the focus then of uh, my presentation is going to look at where we are at now and how the church can harness where we are at now in order to carry out its mandate, which we all understand the Great Commission according to Matthew chapter 28 verse 16. So I'm also going to look at some of the strengths, uh, some of the levers that we can take advantage of in terms of social media, what levers can the church pull without compromising its, uh, its, itself, um, and what are those levers, and how can the church implement uh, and execute those levers in order, again, to implement and to live out its mandate. We are going to look at some of the risks that are involved, because with every industry, every platform, every domain, there's always risks. And I think uh, it would be irresponsible to encourage the use of social media in this information age without us looking at uh, some of the risks that are attached. And of course, we are going to then look at uh, some of the ways and means in which uh, the church can take advantage of social media. So just a loose definition um, of social media, we, uh, we, social media is any digital platform that can be used um, for conversation, for uh, social interaction, as well as information exchange. And I, I would like us to keep this definition in mind because later on in our conversation, we will be looking at the, the, the actual mandate of the church. When Christ says to the church, go out and make decisions disciples of all nations already you can see that there's a correlation you know um between that mandate and how that mandate can be executed uh together with uh the the the, the general makeup the technical makeup of social media and so a distinctive feature of social media is that number one it is fast okay we already know this um those who are involved in gossip you know um in um a newspaper, uh, they use social media when a message needs uh, to reach a larger audience on a sh uh, uh, over a shorter period of time. Social media has now become the, the, the platform of preference, right? Because it's fast, right? Everybody um, is involved in social media one way or another. Uh, those of us uh, who 
you know, a borderline Gen X. Um, we, 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 <laughs> we focus a little bit more on the traditional social media, which is your WhatsApp, you know, the, the less intrusive uh, social media platforms. Uh, but the, the, the important thing is that it is a fast platform for information exchange. A feature also, also uh, that uh, the church needs to look at as relates to social media is that it commands a lot of attention. Now, I want to take us back to how do we join social media? So in order to join any platform on social media, there's uh, your personal information that is required, there's uh, certain registrations, and nobody goes through that process without the intention of engaging, right? And so this means that when you are involved in social media, you will be interested in some of the content. And that's why, you know, platforms like Twitter these days have categorized uh, certain information and, and categories of information, and you get to choose, it's like a whole cocktail of information there's, it's all there and available so the, the bottom line is that social media commands attention it is not possible to be part of that social media community and not be interested in one or another uh, news topic daily so I was also looking at uh, some of the statistics in terms of use, and um, we are learning that email is a thing of the past. I think we already know this just from just from general uh, general interactions in our everyday work. Um, um, uh, the telephone, you know, uh, as in telephone telecommunication, it's becoming a thing of the of the past. Social media is growing daily across the globe. So you would even ask yourself the question, in a continent like Africa, where there's ICT infrastructure issues, how is it that social media is making such headways? And the, and, and, and the answer to that is simple. Uh, besides the fact that where there's a will, there's a way, we have to look at the, first, the fact that even though it requires some degree of technical ability, technical openness, for people to access social media, but there's also the issue of the will. And so when you look at issues around uh, priorities, people want to be socially connected. And this is a distinctive feature of social media. Why is this important for the church? It is important for the church because the church is the traditional place where each and every person would go to when they need to feel the need to be, to be connected to other believers. And so we need to look at that um, as a feature of social media media. It also carries a strong sense um, of appeal. Um, and, and this is, of course, for different categories um, of uh, this is for different categories of um, of content that is sometimes produced, you know, for aesthetic value, for entertainment, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And so we also need to look at who uses social media. Social media is mainly used by those falling under the category of Generation X, Millennials, and Generation Z, right? And in case somebody's wondering, Generation X are those born uh, from 1965 all the way to 1980, Millennials 81 to 96, and Gen Z will be 96 uh, to date. So those are the people that are you that are strong, you top three strong users of social media. This then also tells us that whatever content um, that we choose to put out on social media, it has got to appeal to all categories. And um, if we had time, uh, Your Excellencies, if I can just let the plane pass, uh, I live next to a, an army base. So you're going to hear a lot of activity. <laughs> you're going to hear a lot of activity around. Um, and if we had time, perhaps later on in this, in this conversation, uh, program director, what we can do um, is look at some of the case studies where information that we put out on social media does not necessarily is not necessarily streamlined you know to 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 um to segregate or to cut out a certain generation it is actually direct directly designed in order to appeal to mainly the gen x's the millennials as well as the as well as the gen z now a really big conversation that is currently happening right now across the board you would have seen uh, with the latest report about uh, just transition, the big conversation is the issue of inclusion. 
Yes, I want that to sink. Issue of inclusion. So when we talk about inclusion, we are talking about a, 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 um, a culture where people of all kinds need and want to be included. This is an extremely uh, distinctive feature of social media that the church has got to take advantage of because the issue of inclusion speaks indeed to the very core of our gospel. Go Go out into the entire world, you know, and, and, and make disciples of all nations. And this is an incredible um, um, opportunity for the church to have its message uh, known throughout the world. Uh, I also just want to slip it in there that uh, when we look at the continent of Africa, and I do apologize, I realize this is an international platform, but I'm going to speak to the issue of Africa specifically. Um, when we look at the continent, we understand that currently we have not yet improved in our status of being consumers. So Africans are consumers of content. And this is a great opportunity for the church because you already know that uh, the, 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 the difference between those who are producing content and those who are, con who, are, who are consuming content is quite large. And so this is an opportunity for us to begin to create the kind of demand so that the supply can be continuous and so that we can start changing the trajectory um, of, 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 of consumer uh, versus production. Now let's look at um, some of the some of the features or maybe uses of social media. First of all, digital identity. I think you know in some of the work that I do with the churches, one of the one of the um, what do I call it? One of the blind spots of the church is not to understand that brands are powerful. OK, how we present ourselves is very powerful. So before we even go into social media, who are we? What does our brand say about who we are? And so this is very important because what social media does, it enhances who you say you are, that is what social media will do. So when we do not know who we say we are as the church, and then we go onto social media, we run the risk of, 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 of all sorts of um, um, criticism. We run the risks of uh, 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 mismanaging our own branding. There's a whole lot of things that could happen there. So it's very important for us to understand that social media automatically gives you that identity, that digital identity, whether you like it or not. Secondly, social media affords you the opportunity to have your message heard. To have your message heard. So uh, during lockdown, some of us were locked in, et cetera, et cetera. You know, um, and uh, the Lord was very faithful to allow us to open a prayer community. We have a prayer space on Twitter that has been going on since uh, lockdown. And every time, you know, I look back and I think, okay, Lord, maybe it's maybe this space has run its course. Actually, the numbers are adding every day, and that's why I speak from a place of such conviction that you know, if 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 we understand that social media is there to allow for the voice of the church, the micro microphone of the church to be magnified, the microphone of the church to not just be heard, but to spread across the globe. I think we would have um, a greater sort of, not just understanding, but a, 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 a much more sanitized attitude towards social media. And finally, it gives us the digital footprint that we definitely want. Now, I want to come back to Matthew chapter 28, uh, Your Excellency. If you could please uh, give me an indication. I didn't time myself. Believe it or not, I did not time myself. Um, if you could just give me an indication uh, where when I have five minutes left. Uh, the message of the church is to make disciples, to teach them everything that we have learned from the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, and to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And uh, if you look at the issue of the footprint, also all the uh, uh, opportunities that are afforded by social media are exactly what is required of us so when you when you look at the issue of authority it is we ha we are a church we are, we have authority whether we like it or not i know that you know for example when you are a church organization on social media if you get one like it's a big thing a day you know but the fact is we 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 we, we are an identity we are a grouping we have authority and we ought to use it number two messaging we're making disciples the footprint is across the globe and social media affords us that opportunity so the strengths that uh, social media brings for the church is that it's agile it's fast it's current it's independent technically uh and uh, we have uh, the uh, opportunity to provide the kind of content 
content that we want, and it reaches all groupings. Now, I want to just emphasize on this issue. So a big conversation that, that's currently happening here in South Africa is the issue of inclusion of uh, the uh, language, uh, the sign language, right? that will cater for deaf communities, for the speech impaired, and as well as for the blind. Um, and I, 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 I do think that the church needs to understand that currently, in our current setup, you know, with pulpits and forward buildings, there is a certain grouping in our society that we are not reaching. And when we do reach those people, it's a great minority of that grouping. And so what social media has done, it's broken down the walls of division and it has given the church a greater opportunity for the church to be seen as an inclusive body. Should we then, uh, and, 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 and when I say inclusive, I'm not talking about compromise. We, inc we are inclusive as far as it relates to the mandate that God has given us the message that the, the doctrine of Jesus Christ and nothing else and so social media then gives us that opportunity for us to reach those groupings and uh, for us to be able to access or to deliver the gospel even to those people that would not traditionally want to walk in, walk into our buildings because of a lack of facilities um, that we have to cater for such groupings and finally uh, risks that are associated with uh, social media it has no filter what you see is what you get. If you put it out there, guess what? It's there. Uh, you can't really retract it, okay? Even when you have, chances are it's going to come up, you know, after three years. Um, and I think also the legal the, the legal issues uh, with Papia Act coming on board, UN regulations relating to children and the exposure of, of minors, as well as some of the laws that are coming to challenge uh, the religious authority of, of, of particularly Christianity here in South Africa. So I think there's the, those, are, those are minor risks that we can look at. Um, and of course, if we go onto social media without having having tightened on the issue of digital um of our digital identity the messaging as well as uh, the footprint we run the risk of being uh, exposed prematurely and then finally um if we had to bring this home the question that we need to ask ourselves why is it that the church is struggling so much on social media and i want to present today your excellencies that the biggest problem that we have as the church is that our message is still very mixed you know we are unsure whether we want to be wealthy or, or if we actually want to be Christian. And so there is a, the, 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 there is something about purity, you know, uh, people. Uh, and, and, and if you look at the features of those three generations that are consumers of, of content, authenticity is, is the one thing that makes people listen. So until the church gets to a point where we are unapologetic and authentic about the message of the church, it will be difficult for us to gain the kind of traction that we could you know from a platform like social media why is purity so important be ye holy for i am holy says the lord do we need to even uh, quote any scripture and the bible also explains to us that it is it is ungodly Barcelona, to want to do mixtures you know leviticus do not sow different seeds um uh different seeds on the same ground so the issue of purity is absolutely critical in our um, um in our in our pursuit you know of social media in our pursuit to be seen as current we have to strike the balance the balance that is required today is that we speak and we we teach a gospel that is unfeigned an incorruptible gospel a gospel that understands that we are not here to apologize for who we are but we are here to speak a message and a gospel that is certain in its authority to be able to change the hearts of people back to god and when the bible says when I am lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And I want to, to, to just close uh, this conversation, uh, Your Excellency, and my presentation by challenging us to ask ourselves, those of us who are on social media, those of us who are using social media, what kind of messaging are we putting out there? Are we Christian on Monday? And then on Tuesday, we are whatever it is that we want to be. Let's look at that because the purity of the gospel and this revival that we've been praying for is going to come when the church has decided exactly who they are and what message we actually want to put there. Your Excellencies, I will reserve some of uh, these notes that I have for the Q&A session. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, I think that was, well, I have taken my notes and I think uh, that, was, that was quite an insightful conversation. Some of the few notes I think, uh, and, I'm, and I'm hoping that all of us on the call, um, you know, as 
Her Excellency, um, Ayanda was touching on this. We are we are taking notes because I think there, there are quite a number of important points. And I think as I'm grabbing my notes here, she's talking about, I just wrote four main points for me that my, my key take out, how social media is a very fast platform for information exchange. If it's fast, it would need to be controlled. It's like wildfire. If you don't tame it, it's it may cause disaster. So that's that's one thing I think that was quite important she mentioned. And how social media commands a lot of attention. It's quite a predominant means of communication at this day and age. That even if you heard anything whatsoever about a person, about a country, you most likely search it there and you'll find it. Um, the third one that I think was quite critical that you touched on, I absolutely loved is how social media actually answers a need. And this was so powerful, especially for the church, because what you said, you said people have the need or want to be connected. By nature, we are social beings. If I may take you back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, at the very bottom, people need physiological needs. You need to ensure that you have a roof over your head. Those are the basic needs. And the needs to feel safe follows right after. You, you have a home, you are safe. Immediately the next thing is the need to be connected. And it's so important how psycho psychologically that is a human need and social media is advancing that so powerfully. And I think it's one of the reasons why the adoption of social media globally, uh, it's really at an astronomical rate. And then lastly, one of the things, I mean, that of course includes um, uh, the, 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 the sense of inclusion you spoke about. But here's what I love that you mentioned last, you said, uh, brands are powerful. And you know, the church need not neglect this because social media enhances who you claim you are. If I may quote in the book of Mark chapter number one, Jesus cast out a demon and in verse 28, the Bible says, and his fame went about or his fame spread throughout the cities. What does that mean? You may do one thing and by tomorrow morning when you wake up, People on the other side of the world already know about it. And that is the power of social media. Anyway, those were just my takeouts. And I think that was so powerful. Um, thank you so much, Excellency. And I think, you know, all of us are taking notes. And that was quite an enlightening uh, 20 minutes. I think you, you just might have went a little bit over, but that's okay. Um, I think I also got an indication here from my notes that uh, Mr. Tayo has now joined us. And I think uh, we will go back to him. I think, uh, Excellency Tayo, welcome. I have already introduced you and uh, read your bio. So I think it's only uh, right that you jump straight into your conversation. I will time your 20 minutes. It starts now, sir. The floor is yours. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, I, your excellencies. And um, I'm the last um, speaker, spoke very articulately and I think the conversation has been sustainably uh, been put on on the front burner. I'm just going to be touching on a few other things that she had actually already mentioned towards the last time that I joined. But before I do that, I will take my own slightly from a very different perspective. Sorry, I was having problem I had identifying my slide. So, but I just, just gonna, because it's 20 minutes, I'm just gonna speak through it. Now, when you talk about social media, how can this be used to advance the kingdom of God? Two things that are very paramount in my mind is our understanding first and foremost of what the kingdom of God is. You understand? Because, you know, you can, we can be talking about how the social media can be helped to advance a church. That's a different ballgame. But if we talk about how social media can help to advance the kingdom of God, we must understand what the kingdom of God is. You know, and if you look through scriptures, the Bible will say the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is with us. All these various scriptures talks about something that is totally different from what a lot of people call the kingdom of God today. The kingdom of God is not the local church. The kingdom of God is not, you know, going to heaven. The kingdom of God is the activity of human in which God is governing. The, 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 go, the governance of our almighty God in the activity of men is really what is called the kingdom of God. So if you now look that in, within the context of what we are discussing today, how is social media helping 
horse to actually facilitate the dominance of God within the activity of man is going to be a totally different conversation from the, from the perspective of, okay, yes, I, you know, I don't want to do this, but I'm just going to look at it from just four different issues I want to touch on. First and foremost, social media, arguably, one of the most powerful things about social media is a content platform. Content, 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 content. And if you really want to build the kingdom of God, if you want to actually allow, you know, the, the governance of God to reign and to rule in the affairs of men, which is what is called the kingdom of God, we must be a people who are content driven. You know, like one of my pastors, we always say, you know, the Bible, the first, the first five gospel, um, the first five books of the new, first four, um, books of New Testament talks about the gospel according to Matthew, the gospel according to Luke, the gospel, which it's a which is their their understanding of Christ, and how they were able to communicate it to us. This they gave us content. The Bible is content, and if anybody really wants to be able to rule and reign and have the kingdom of God to dominate in the affairs of men, we must find a way of taking our understanding of God and create the content out of it and invade the social media with our own understanding of what the kingdom is. And what does that mean? I mean, basically that, you know, we, we talk about all the, I mean, I don't want to go into all the details of, you know, the uniqueness of a social media. As, as we speak, every one minute, almost close to about 22 million people are actually on YouTube. Every, almost close to about 5 million people are actually interacting on, on Twitter. Almost about, almost about 10, 10 to 100 million people are interacting on, on, on Facebook. So what are we trying to say is that the need for us to understand to be a content people to be people who are able to articulate our content in such a way that we can milk the word of God in such a way that it can actually flow and engage very intelligently on that space is a mandate that we all as Christians need to embrace. Because it's not enough, like, like, you know, one of my man of God will always say, if Jesus Christ were to be on earth today, he will use the social media like like he would go to the temple. The Bible says in the book of Luke, he went to the temple as his custom was, which means that it wasn't a it wasn't a one-off thing. He goes there, you know, regularly. And so what am I trying to say? Every single one of us that want to function, I want to allow the kingdom of God to reign in the affairs of men. We must be content creators. We must be a people that's going to make a commitment to say every morning, once I finish my morning devotion, I'm going to share my thought or my handle. I'm going to share the revelation that God gave me, something I'm going to take away from what I've learned from church. I'm going to share it on my, on my, on my, because whether you, if you, whether you do it or not, you know, there is a group of people who are going to inundate you with their own content. So what am I trying to say? Social media is all about content. So that's the first thing I want to say because of time. We all must make up our mind. I want to create content. And if you find a content that is very, very impactful online, the, the next thing you have to connect with that content, retweet it, repost it, like it. Don't just be the kind of people that also only consume content. And because, because that's what we into. to do. Because what the social media has done is created a platform for all of us to be evangelists. It's created a platform for all of us, you know, to be a prophet. It's created a platform for us to function in within the role that God has ordained us to be. So first and foremost is content. And I just to me, just to reiterate what she already said, the next thing about social media is community, right? Of course, talking about content, one of the things I always say to everybody is, if you are a Christian that spent quality time in the word of God every morning, create what is called a unique hashtag, that we can use to know the body of message you are bringing on the table. What does that mean? Which means that if you say, I'm going to be providing content on social media, you know, that speaks to, um, give me a minute. Oh, I didn't know my, whatever is almost gone. You know, if you're going to be speaking on content that speak to, you know, um, kingdom prosperity, for example, all I just have to do is create an hashtag that can make my body of content that I'm providing on the internet to be available to every single person that wants to benefit from it, right? So what, what we need to do basically is all of us to be content creators. All of us need to be content creators and not just content consumers. 
all of us need to be content creators and not just content consumers. It's not enough to say we're living the social media space for it because it's the system of the world. No. The truth of the matter, if you look into every new innovation that comes into town, is that there is something, if you trace it down, Christianity always strives when a new you know, innovation comes in. Look at the printing press in Germany. You understand? That was where the Bible was printed. Right, that was when Bible was now able to be shared, you know, in a very wide way. In a, I mean, everybody can now own a Bible compared to what it used to be before. So the social media has provided for us an opportunity for every single one of us to create a body of content, follow one another, and engage. Because the Bible says that the, the word of the Lord shall fill, you know, you know, the earth just like as the water covers the sea. The social media has provided a platform for every Christian, every matured Christian, to really push your content out and ensure that we hear your voice online and you're using your content to actually engage your community. Then second thing is community. Just like what she said, community is everything. I mean, Jesus had 12 and he had 500 and he had that number and that's what we call following. You understand? So social media is all about following. It's all about the quality of your content and how much you are able to actually get people to follow it. Let me tell you the secret. You know, one of the things I've learned, you know, in, in, in actually managing brands is that if your content is good enough, you are able to make greater influence, you know, than even what you can do in your shops. We tell a lot of business, if you don't pay attention, for example, to your online footprint, and if you spend more money on your online fruit, on your physical location than your online footprint, depending on the kind of business you do, you are really not digital compliant. So what are we trying to say? Many people spend a lot of money on building churches, but they don't have strong presence on the internet. Let me tell you, every single thing you have planted in the mind of those mind on Sunday, when they go online Monday to Friday, it's going to be eroded. So churches need to raise an army of internet warriors. You understand? Kingdom of God needs to run army of internet. And I love the topic, and I, and I love the fact that we're having this conversation here. The kingdom of God needs to make a deliberate effort to invade that space called social media. It needs to be intentional. The same way, you know, churches normally have evangelism team. Churches need to need begin to have what is called cyberspace warriors. People who are just going to be thought, are going to be given the nuances on how to actually be champions on the internet, and they're going to form a very strong community. Excellent. We seem to have lost you there. Uh, let's quickly check. It might be connection issues, but I think uh, we'll probably give him a few minutes. He still had uh, 10 minutes and nine seconds left on his clock. Uh, but that's right, I think maybe as he, he reconnects quickly, um, there are quite some important points that, you know, uh, Mr. Tayo is touching on here. And I think, you know, just to go through, um, as he's going through, I'm just making some key takeouts for myself. Uh, firstly, I think he started by the kingdom. And I think touching on the kingdom and how we need to differentiate it from the church. And I think based on his definition, He's pretty much saying that the kingdom of God is the activity of God through men on the earth. And therefore it becomes quite important what we do to establish the kingdom of God on earth. It was quite an integral point that he touched on. Um, but one thing that's beautiful that I love actually, I think of all the key takeouts I've taken from him, is that we need to be content driven since social media is all about content, content, content. And I think the reason this is important, um, I'm taking it back to scripture is because Jesus was a teacher. And for you to be a teacher, that means you need to have content, right? Of all the things, he opened blind eyes, he raised the dead, he fed the hungry. But the one thing they called him was teacher, because at any given point in time, he gave them content. And I think that's quite a beautiful way of looking at it. I really appreciate that insight over there. Um, the third thing he mentioned that if Jesus was on earth today, he would be using social media. And I think immediately my gut feel agrees with that. And one of the main reasons why, because he said to them, tarry in Jerusalem until you've endued with power from an eye. But when it is that they endued with power from an eye, he says, go to the world, right? Jerusalem, Judea, 
until the uttermost parts of the earth. And today, the quickest way to reach the ends of the earth is through these digital platforms that we have. It's quite an interesting perspective. Um, but lastly, you know, in my notes, one of the things that I took is that you go to church on Sunday, but Monday to Saturday, church members are inundated with secular content from Monday to Saturday. Therefore, we need to dominate these digital platforms because when we are not sharing, the world somehow continues to share. Um, if His Excellency is not back, I think it might be connection issues. We will move on to our next speaker, but those are quite interesting points there, especially on our perspective on social media. And I think it's quite important that um, we, we, we quickly try to redeem the times because days are evil. Um, I'm going to move on here to our third speaker. I think should uh, Excellency Tayo join us back, we'll probably give him a few minutes to round off his thoughts because he, uh, he still had 10 minutes left. But ladies and gentlemen, we do have here, and I hope I'm pronouncing it uh, correctly, His Excellency Mr. Rem Aguko uh, from Kenya. Uh, we are quite honored to have you, Excellency. And quickly, just to take you through his bio before we give him his 20 minutes to enlighten us with some of the insights, you know, and his expertise as far as social media is concerned and how we need to transform this for the advancement of the kingdom of God. Uh, Mr. Aguko, you know, has a background in broadcast media and communications, having worked in the media industry through television, radio. Mr. Aguko is a producer, TV presenter, and content creator. I absolutely love that, content creator. He's a public speaker who believes in the power within. Having spoken on various uh, fora on topical issues, Mr. Aguko has empowered and mentored many he has hosted and moderated local and international conferences on various platforms, having experience in being an MC on both casual and official events. Mr. Rama Guko is a born again Christian and a church leader holding various leadership positions. He has a passion for Christ and believes in servant leadership and excellence in ministry through biblical principles. He has led in pioneering various church programs, events and projects for the glory of God. And lastly, um, Mr. Aguko is also pursuing his Masters of Arts in Leadership. Excellency Aguko, we are quite honored to have you speak on this platform. And your 20 minutes starts now. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Sawyer. Mr. Mosa, yes, let me turn on my video. I believe you can hear me. Yes, sir, we can hear you clearly. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mosa. And uh, yes, my name is Ram Aguko. Uh, in Kenya here, it's around uh, 8.59 p.m. So uh, I'm glad to be here. I made a presentation, let me share my screen. And then, uh, Let me know if you can see it in the next uh, 10 seconds. Now we can see it, sir. Go ahead. Thank you so much. I believe you can see uh, that. Thank you so much. So um, I want to say a big thanks to all our speakers and uh, everybody that um, you know organized this event. Thanks to GPR and thank you, Mr. Mosa, for uh, such a, a very powerful moderation that you, you you're doing this evening. Um, I want to say that uh, our previous speakers have spoken quite well, and uh, I love the fact that you know we are passionate for Christ. Uh, big thanks to Mr. Tayo and uh, Ms. Ayanda for such kind of um, you know, uh, insightful discussions that uh, they, they have uh, made. Now, I just want to proceed with that, but um, not to repeat what they have said. I love that they have set pace on this discussion. 
and one thing that we need to understand even as a church um, is that we, we, we have our own uh, a purpose to, to have. We have a purpose to, let me remove this. Wonderful. One thing that we need to understand is that the pap, uh, we have a purpose as a church. We are the light of the world. We are the light of the world as a church. And uh, our purpose uh, you know, uh, is to understand that uh, just as we are the light of the world, we are ministers. So whether things change or not, we are ministers. We are servants of God. We are, we, we are children of God. The Bible says that he came to his own and his own did not accept him. But those who accepted him, he gave them the power. Other translation says the right to become sons of God. Other translation says children of God. Regardless of the fact that social media came, there was a time we didn't have social media. Now it came. Does it mean that uh, we, uh, now that times have changed, we change? Does it mean that our identity changes? No, we remain constant. But we need to understand that the purpose of social media is very, very important, especially in a church setting where we are. In a church setting, social media can be used as a tool of trade because we know who we are and we understand what we are. We can use what we are and, and promote what we are online to spread the gospel of Christ. Now, this is why I always advocate this. And uh, in our church, I'm the chairman of the media department in our church. And I always say this, that um, we need to have media departments in all churches. We need to establish media departments in all churches, but they need to have a mission and vision. What is the mission and the vision of the media departments in our church? How can we use social media to advance the kingdom of God? I love what our previous uh, speaker had uh, mentioned. That is Mr. Toya uh, when he was talking about uh, Mr. Tayo when he was talking about there's a difference between advancing the church and advancing the kingdom of God. I love that and I felt blessed with it when I heard that. Social media here is here to stay. This is a fact, but so is the word of God. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, social media is here to stay. I love uh, that our moderator, Mr. Uh, Moya, was saying, was giving statistics, and it is true. Social media is here to stay, but so is the word of God. Brothers and sisters, your excellencies, <laughs> social media is here to say, but so is the word of God. The word of God is going to be here, and it will even last longer than social media. But... We need to take advantage of the times. Now that the, the, the times are here, we should not be left behind. Um, I know that there are some certain regions uh, uh, or certain parts of the world that do not believe in social media. They question and they ask questions like, should Christians be on social media? Should men of God be on social media? There was a time when social media was starting and some, some men of God were saying, you know what? It is an evil place to be. Right now, it is the place where we are using to spread the word of God. We will not be left behind, uh, Your Excellencies. We are going to take uh, use and take advantage of the trends that are there and take a, uh, and use them to advance the kingdom of God. You can see on the screen Ephesians five fifteen says that make the uh, let's make use of the time because the days are evil. Uh, the moderator mentioned that when we started, we should take advantage of the time because this is the time of social media. But now I'm not saying that we, we should copy paste what is in the world into the church. No, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is let us ensure that we promote the principles of Christ on our social media platforms. We cannot pro promote what we are not. When I started, I said that we should know who we are. We are men of God. We, we are children of God. And we cannot promote a kingdom that is not within us. Okay, so uh, it will be very difficult for you to, to promote something that is not within you, even as we're saying uh, that we are promoting social media to advance the, we are, we are using social media to advance the kingdom of God and promote the kingdom of God, it is difficult to promote what is not within you. And that is why when I see somebody who claims to be a man of God on social media posting things that are not 
you know, expected of a man of God, I am not shocked because that person is only posting what is within them. Out of the appearance of their heart, the mouth speaks. In Romans chapter 12, verses 2, the Bible says, do not be conformed into the patterns of this world, but we be transformed by the renewal of the mind. Whether the social media trends are, are ab about any particular issue, we are not, as a church, promoting uh, you know, you know the things of the world. We are not going to, going to be confirmed the patterns of the world, but through the trans transformation and the, the in, in, you know of, of the church of ourselves, that through the renewal of our mind, we promote what we perceive to be the word of God, the principles of Jesus Christ. We are not going to to promote what we think is right according to our own eyes. What we think is right according to what we believe in personally. No, no, no. Personally, I believe that when we get into salvation, when we are born again, our culture is left out. Whether you come from South Africa or Kenya or Nigeria or any part of the world, when, once you're born again, your culture is left out and you bring in the culture of Jesus. The, the trends of Christ, the, the image of Christ is now within you. You are now a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. So you're no longer wise according to your own eyes. But through the fear of God, we turn away from evil and we bring in what the word of God says to social media. Social media should not di dictate how the church operates. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23, that all things are lawful, but not all things are beneficial. Not all things are helpful for me. So yes, social media is there, but not everything is going to help us when it comes to social, social media. Let us you know, ask ourselves this question. When we are online, what exactly are we saying? And what are we seeing? Okay, let's be tolerant of, of one another because I believe that you're promoting Christ-like tendencies. We are promoting Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, verse 21, and I will be quoting so many scriptures as you continue because the social, you know, the word of God is full of scriptures that are connected to social media. <laughs> Even though it is uh, excellent. Yes. Ex ex excuse me, just uh, pardon me. If you're moving your slides, we are still seeing the first slide. I'm not sure if. I, ha I have been moving my slides from the beginning. We are still on, we are still seeing the first one. The title slide that says social media. Yes, wow. now, now, now we just moved. Yes, now we can see we're on slide six. Thank wow, you. Wow, sorry. I, am, I have been moving. <laughs> wow, wow, no problem. Um, so let me just proceed from where I am because of time, or, 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 or uh, uh, my brother. So, um, so what, what I was saying is that. Um, You can see that? Yes, now we are following. The slides are moving. Thank you. Mm, all right. I put it on presentation mode. Sorry. But I believe that we are getting the content. I believe you are getting the content. Um, yes, sir. We, we, we are going to promote the word of God. These are the previous slides that were there that I was saying social media is here to say so is the word of God. Uh, we should, uh, you know, uh, uh, take advantage of the times that are there. Let me quickly go to the next one. You know, Christ's principles should be promote, promoted. Are you promoting the kingdom of God within you? That's what uh, one of our speakers had just mentioned there. Let me quickly move to where I am. What are you seeing on social media? What are you saying when you are online? Um, we, we, we need to know that power, the power of death and life, and, and life lies in our tongue. In the book of Proverbs 18, verse 21, the power of, of death and life lies in your tongue. The same, same thing can be promoted online. You can promote life or death online. Our, 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 our principles are guided by the word of God. The word of God is our constitution. It is what guides us. It is what orient, uh, orients our, uh, our mind and our belief systems. So if you uh, look at the, uh, at, at the things you are going to be commenting on, it is not everything that is online that we should be commenting on. And I always say this, even I teach this in our church, you, you know, 
a man of God needs to know the places where they need to go when they uh, are on social media. How are you advancing the kingdom of God uh, through your speech? Let your speech always be generous, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer one another when you are online. Let, let, let God be promoted through you. Let not e your ego be bruised when somebody challenges your posts. Are you promoting the kingdom of God even when somebody tells you that you know what, the, uh, 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 this is not what is right, this is what is right, and they insult you on social media? How will you advance the kingdom of God when your ego is bruised, when your principles are challenged, when the word of God is challenged online? How? At the end of the day, may I decrease and may Christ be increased in my life. It is, it, it is not about me, but about Jesus. So we need to walk in, in wisdom towards one another, even on, when we are online. In the book of Colossians chapter 4, verses 5, the Bible says that walk in wisdom towards outsiders, making the best use of the times. Mm -hmm. Because when we, are, when we go online, we shall interact with many different people. But the, regardless of it, the kingdom of God must be advanced. We are called men, uh, men and women of God. We are called. The Bible says, for you did not choose me, but I chose you. So that you may go and bear fruits and that your fruits shall remain. Social media posts should have content that carry the message that is uplifting to the people. The good news, the word of God. That's how you can advance the kingdom of God. Consider the places where you go to in Hebrews 10, 25, you know, let's consider how we stir up one another. Let the word of God be stirred up even on social media. Let the, the word of God be stirred up to somebody so that when somebody goes online and they check their phone in the morning, they see a word posted by you and they say that they are blessed and their day is already you know, blessed because of the things they see you post on your social media platforms. They will follow you. They will like you, but what is it that you're promoting that will last longer than you? Social media posts should be uplifting to the public. Let, let, let us stir up the love of God amongst ourselves. At the end of the day, this is my belief. I believe that wisdom and foolishness speak at different wavelengths. Wisdom and foolishness speak at different wavelengths. When a man of God speaks, it, it's going to be <laughs> to have a different impact from when uh, 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 somebody who is not a believer speaks. It, there must be a difference between, between us and non-believers. So when you post, whatever you post uh, 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 online is going to be like a seed that is planted. When you post it, and, and, and I, I love it that one of our speakers had mentioned this, uh, earlier on when we were we, we, we were starting and uh, I, I believe that was uh, uh, Miss uh, Miss Ayanda and, and 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 she was saying that when you post something it's there to stay that is true it is there to, to stay it is like some a seed that you plant that will should grow and bear fruit there are six things that God hates according to the, to the book of Proverbs but one thing that is being mentioned when you read that scripture towards verses 19 people who saw discord among brothers. When we go online, what are we sowing? You are sowing something, you're planting a seed. Be careful whether you get emotional or not, be careful because you are still a child of God. We are called. What you post tells more about you than, what other, than, than others. It tells more about your belief systems. Let the fruits of God be seen in your life through your posts. Promote the kingdom of God. Remember I said when I started that that, is, that which is within you is the one that you will share online. Let the fruits of the Holy Spirit be seen. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. You know, let the, the fruits of the Holy Spirit that is within you be seen on social media through your posts. But one thing that I know, when somebody talks too much, there is always going to be a problem. So I'm careful with, you know, when I go online, because I know very well that we, where there are many words, sin is not lacking. 
if you read the book of Proverbs 10, verses 19, where there are many words, sin is not lacking. Other translations say transgression is not lacking. So when you go online and, and, and you know, there is an argument that is uh, ensuing, how are you going to react? Remember when I said what I said, foolishness and wisdom speak at different wavelengths. Look at this uh, 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 man of God. You see this? A very interesting meme. We can use this to promote even our own, uh, <laughs> ourselves. Look at that meme. This is somebody saying, our God is stronger than your God, Elijah, at Mount Carmel. And Elijah's face is like, is he though? Is he though? We can, we, we can take our our pastors, we, we can record our pastors, take, take small clips of what our pastors are, are saying and share them online. Let's have memes from the church being promoted by the church. Let's have trending topics being promoted by the church. Let's have conversations being promoted by the church. We can even have you know, our own uh, jokes, our own inspirational stories being promoted by the church. It's all about Jesus. He must increase, but I must decrease. Ladies and gentlemen, men of God, the harvest is ready and the means is available. Social media is the means. And our speakers, uh, one of our speakers said this, that we should go into the world and preach the gospel unto all nations. Because at the end of the day, social media is here to stay, but so is the word of God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Excellency. Uh, we truly appreciate that. And then let me just highlight that you, you were just on time. There's actually one minute and 27 seconds left on your time. So that, that was quite um, excellent. Thank you so much. You, you, I think you touched on a, a couple of interesting things, but uh, for me, the, the uh, main three points that stood out in your presentation that truly blessed me. And I think the first one uh, had the convener, I think, being present in, in, in this conversation, you would have loved. You started with purpose. And I think we all know that uh, the convener, His Excellency Prof. Sipom Selek, is quite passionate about purpose. And he said the church has a purpose. But I love what you said after. He says, we are the light of the world. And I think you taking us, taking us there to that book of, of Matthew, and highlighting that, firstly, you realize that Jesus, firstly, in John 9 said, as long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world, just before he healed the man that was born blind. But interestingly, that baton has been passed on to us. He says, now you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. And I think it's quite powerful that that needs to be our vantage point. Anytime you go on social media, I think that needs to be the lens through which we use social media to go, how will this post how will this content bring light to the world? I think that was quite powerful. But I think my favorite statement you made tonight, which I'm walking away with, is that social media is here to stay, but so is the word of God. I think that's quite powerful. It really blessed me so much. Actually, it took me to the book of Hebrews 12 and said the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing even you know, the asunder of soul and spirit, the design of thoughts and intents of the heart, that's how powerful the word of God is. And that means even on these platforms of social media, sharing the word of God will really permeate and resonate with people. Uh, that was quite powerful. You also mentioned how it's difficult to promote what is not within you. <laughs> and I think the church needs to represent Christ on social media because if it's not something that's in you, then it's, it's gonna be quite evident that it's not something that you carry. Um, but one thing I think which was a word of admonition from you to us, was that social media is full of criticism and you always need to have the right attitude and understand that it is not about you. Lastly, you quoted John 3 verse 30. And you know, in that particular story, it's quite interesting because John was famous at the time as the last of the prophets to point out the Christ. And that is one of the reasons why Jesus calls him blessed among all others. But what's interesting is that he was the most famous one at the time preaching the message of repentance. And his disciples come to him and they say, teacher, remember that guy you baptized? Him and his disciples are also baptizing now other people on the other side. And John says, so what's wrong with that? He must increase and I, and I must decrease. And I think that humility is so powerful because interestingly, social media 
can also become about fame, can also become about the number of followers that you have and how much of an influential voice that you have. But I think that humility to always remember, it is not about you. We are here to promote Christ was quite powerful. So thank you so much, excellencies. I think um, it's, it's, it's quite important at this, at this juncture of our conversation. It's quite an interesting conversation. And I'm, I'm very grateful to our panelists. And if, if you joined us late, I mean, we've been getting glimpses and insights from these panelists that we are truly excited about. I mean, I took quite a number of notes and I think we, we're starting to see social media from a different vantage point. It's not just about consumerism where you get online, you think, uh, I'm bored, let me see what I can consume. Because remember that the mind is the most impressionable organ or the most impressionable part of you. Whatever you feed your mind influences you, influences your actions, influences your speech. So what you consume is important. Uh, and as Christians just going on social media, consuming everything, your actions will show what has been influencing your mind. And I think also as the church, we need to find ways of using these principles that have just been shared with us to take advantage of social media to ensure that we spread the message of the kingdom of God. Now, based on what we've been talking about, thank you so much to our, our panelists. And I think as you see with the program on the side there, we are getting now to the next chapter, which I think I'm going to just open up the floor to get a couple of questions. Maybe you've been you know, sitting throughout this session listening in on conversation also, maybe taking some notes of your own. And, but here and there, maybe you have questions about uh, social media. And I mean, our panelists are still here and we are so excited that they will engage us and you know, continue to enlighten us. Maybe there are some places where you still feel like you had questions or concerns or you need some clarity. I already see a hand. Um, so that's quite exciting. Dr. Martha, we are honored to have you. Please go ahead. Dr. Martha, are you there? You are muted if you are saying anything. Just quickly ensure that we grant Dr. Martha the access to speak. Um, there we go. Dr. Math, I think you've been granted access now. You can unmute can you yourself. Me? Can you hear me? Now we can hear you clearly. Thank you so much. Okay, great. It was, I don't know, the, the host had me muted. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you opened it. This was an awesome session. The um, three speakers are fantastic, very uh, passionate and energetic. Uh, I'll tell you, about six or seven years ago, I was getting a, a big, American NGO that uh, did mission work into the Dominican Republic. And I remember Facebook was really pushing forward and I had all kinds of reaction from the different mission groups. Some of them would say, this is the devil's work. We don't wanna have anything to do with it. And then I had the others who had actually embraced it. And then the, the organization had to transform in a way where they would allow the contact directly with the children and the sponsors in the US. So I think it's a beautiful way to connect. I think that the concept of connection through social media is very important. Um, I can tell you of today, the church I am part of for the last 27 years is now a very uh, social media kind of church. We, we have our, our places of reunion but we have a whole bunch of connections throughout the week. We even have intercession groups like through Telegram where we're actively interceding together at the same time and we're praying together for different situations. So I think that the, the part of connections of social media is critical. Uh, advancing, and they, I, I can't remember who was the one who talked about the content, uh, advancing the word of God as the content of our of our 
use of social media is critical. I have something called Predicas del Parque, which is um, a, um, preaching from from the from the um, park. I, I ride a bike in a park and I also walk in this park and the Lord speaks to me every time, you know, like about different things. And then when I get home, I sit and write those up and put them in the media. And I'm surprised how many people read it and, and, and react back. And some people will say things like, this word got to me at the right moment. This reflection was important for my life. So I think all of us should be encouraged to use whatever social media we are into whether it's you know these quicker ones or you know the the Twitter, the Snapchat, the TikToks, the whatevers. I personally love Instagram, and and I don't do what my kids do, which is like a little short message and it's gone. I do the ones that stay, and I I love to do that. I think that this is an amazing tool that the Lord has opened for all of us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Martha. We appreciate that. And um, I mean, it also quite, it's, it's, it's inspirational to know how, you know, in the beginning, I think it was an uh, excellency, Miss Ayanda, that touched on the different generations and how they use social media. I'm, I'm quite excited, Dr. Martha, that you are on Instagram and using it to post. The ones that don't stay are called Reels. They're called Instagram Reels. Uh, but uh, it's quite exciting to know that, you know, the Lord would speak to you and you would use social media to use those words that were spoken to you, to inspire you, uh, but it doesn't just end with you. You use that especially to encourage others. So thank you very much for that um, comment. Are there any questions that we have? I'm not seeing any hands. Um, let's quickly check, maybe they're in the, maybe they're in the chats. Please notify me, media team, if I'm missing anyone's hand. I can tell somebody has been made a host right now. If you have a question, please go ahead. Excellency. Good Olo evening, Sunday, everybody. Please. Thank you so Good much. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, your excellencies. Thank you to all the speakers. You've been so wonderful. Um, I would just like to add one or two things. It's not a question. I hope that I hope that's okay. All right. Thank you that's very okay. much. Thank you. Okay, so um, what I just wanted to add is, um, you know, since um, we're growing up way back, we used to hear that the world is a small village. There's no way the world would have been a small village without the internet. It's become a small village because of the internet. We're on this call today, we have South Africans, we have Kenyans, we have Nigeria. For us to actually be physically together, we'd have to be traveling thousands of miles to come together to be in one village. But here we are on this platform, the Zoom platform. We are in a village. We can hear each other. It's real life. I can say something right now and get an answer immediately. And so it is indeed a powerful tool that we can actually use to propagate the gospel. And it's interesting to note that, um, I'm sorry to say this, I, I see it happen all the time. For example, if everyone here was in say, um, let's call the church, the church of Christ, we're all members. But you find out that, let's assume we are 20 here and I post something on the word of God. Out of the 20 here, just maybe only two would comment or like what I've said. I mean, we're supposed to be a church. I mean, I've said something that is elevating about the word of God that can propagate the gospel. But you see, the remaining 18 would rather just gloss by and not say anything, not comment, not even a like. I see that happening every now and then. But that just tells me that we don't yet, we have not yet come to the realization that the tool we have in our hand is a powerful one to reach the unreachable. Not everyone will be able to carry a physical Bible. But as we're on this call, I can access my Bible. I can read 
the Bible. I can hear the word of God, but I don't want to read it. So when my lifestyle and your lifestyle on the internet, on the social media, begins to speak positively to the lives of others who have not come to know Christ, then we will be doing a good work for Christ. It will be a propagation of the gospel. So we all need to stop, wait a moment and check. How does my post affect another in a positive way? Is it bringing sukkah? Is it bringing smiles? Is it enriching the lives of those that read it? Can they come to know Christ by what I share? So these are much more uh, what I believe. Indeed, social media is a powerful tool that we can use to propagate the gospel, that can help us go the gospel to the very end and the uttermost end of the earth. Thank you very much, Excellency. We appreciate that. I actually picked up one question from that, but I'm going to take this last hand uh, before I pose this question maybe uh, to our panelists lastly before I round off. Um, I'm seeing a hand here. It simply says Galaxy AO2, so I'm not sure exactly uh, the name. So please go ahead and speak, Excellency. So, okay. Uh, good. Good evening, Excellency and friends. Uh, my name is Tabo Ho uh, from the Living Spring Public Church. Um, actually, I, my question was specifically to say, uh, as much as we know that social media is a tool that has been used mostly by uh, people uh, in the world to maximize and publicize whatever that they want to publicize. So I'm um, them coming with a point to say, my question is that what are the tools that we can use to help churches to make the preaching or uh, anything that we want uh, uh, to, to trend for, 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 for a session? Like for an example, if let's say the preaching that we've recorded and we want that preaching to trend. Uh, if you can maybe help us to uh, the, the tools that we can use to make that preaching trend, because social media is just a platform. And if you don't look at it in the right way, it's somehow like a war, because now we want to publicize Christ. At the same time, the world wants to publicize their other things. So we then have to be more wiser and have more tools and be more advanced in understanding that this is a war uh, in that regard. I don't want to make it long, but I just wanted to say that uh, uh, my question is to say, what are the tools that you can help us to make a preaching or to help the churches to make a preaching or a message to trend? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, um, I actually love that question because it ties in with uh, the one I had. Let me have a little bit of grace to Excellency Princess Anne. You are going to be the last one to ask uh, the question. I quickly want uh, our panelists to, to, to respond. Um, so uh, can we kindly grant her access? Uh, media team, can you assist me with that? So, so we finish off that question. Yes, Excellency, go ahead. I think you can speak now. Uh, good evening and praise the Lord, everyone. Good evening. Mine is an appreciation to such a great topic and the great insights we've received. And it's not a question, just an addition that uh, we are living in a, in a world where things are changing so fast. And just like we are continuing to build our social relationships, helping um, they understand our thoughts and everything on the social media. It's very important also that we take the gospel to the social media because uh, we as the church are supposed to position ourselves in the, um, be able to communicate to the world, be able to preach to the world, to be able to encourage the world uh, through the social media because times are changing so fast. So uh, we really thank God for such a topic and it's my desire and prayer 
that we shall be able to get into this cyberspace and be able to preach to the world the good news, be able to share to the world the encouragements and tell them more about Christ because it's the greatest commission that we've been given. So it's not just about sharing our personal issues or our opinions, but as a church, it's important that people get really equipped on how to use the media so that can be able to reach the world because a time may come when people may not even be going to church and uh, church the physical building and how are we going to get them? The only way is to reach them through the media. So thank you so much to all the presenters for such a great topic. And it's my desire that we shall all continue uh, sharing the same to our friends and even the church so that we can equip ourselves to get into the world uh, through social media. Thank you. Thank you so much, Excellency. You know, it's, it's, it's always good to, especially to hear the, the, the positive feedback. I think it's quite powerful every time we think of uh, social media, especially depending on the generation, uh, they would usually say, this one is for, is for the youngsters. But I think, uh, don't take lightly how powerful this tool is. And it's one of the reasons why we are having this topic today. But however, I think lastly, I want to give our panelists, I, I'm going to cap it at exactly two minutes each, right? I'm going to cap it at two minutes each in the interest of time because I'm quite cognizant of time. And here is the, the question. I'm going to couple the two questions that um, I had uh, both. I think firstly from Excellency Olosunde, uh, it, was, it was a comment, but I derived a question from it. And I think uh, lastly, Mr. Debo Owen, he spoke, it kind of plugs into that. The question becomes, why don't we interact? So whenever there is content, I think she mentioned something quite powerfully, how even in the church, when we post something, in fact, recently in one of our main meetings, uh, I think it was Apostle Joseph Nyalungu that said, we can put great content out there, but the same people are not liking, are not following, are not commenting, are not sharing to other people they know. And they don't even have to create the content, just sharing it. So why are we not interacting? That is the question. And I think sub to that question, what follows would be um, what tools therefore can we use to make sure that our content trends according to the world's question, because he's saying the content is there, but it doesn't seem to be getting the traction. But could it be that the challenge to that is the first question that people are not interacting with it. So please, our panelists, I'm going to start in that order again. Maybe this time uh, we should start with his excellency Tayo because he got cut off uh, Excellency, you have two minutes. Please, if you can just uh, respond to that question. Your thoughts in two minutes? All right. All right. Okay, so I was actually going to ask that. Let me, my, it is because apart from content, apart from community, the next thing is communication. Communication, interaction. Everybody that wants to have presence on the internet and you want to trend, you must intel in intentionally build communication don't just talk be able to actually develop the skill to talk in a to, to to share your stuff like a communication right so when you say at this you know I'm, I'm talking about how to get your content to trend you know one of the things is number one find out that you can actually use to get your content to a larger audience than your followers. If you only have 20 people, 100 people following you, but you have a very unique hashtag that people are looking for. When people find that, people follow hashtags. People, they are students of hashtag today. They just follow a particular hashtag and every single time anything drop on that hashtag, they just get it, right? So you must find a unique hashtag that speak to your message. Just like we have the gospel according to Matthew. You can call the hashtag Matthew. Hashtag the book of John, hashtag the good of, you know, so find a unique hashtag that can reach a wider audience. And also before you find the hashtag, make sure you have what is called intelligence, because it's one thing to speak. Anytime Jesus is speaking, it goes to strategic places where it can actually get a ladder in a very big audience. Every single time, whether it is when he was doing the Beatitudes, Bible says he went to a certain place and he stood on the mountain and he spoke to them. It was strategic. You know, when he went to the boats of, of, of Peter 
and he sat in boat of Peter and was speaking to them. It was strategic. There was an amplification that goes with your voice when you have the right methodologies to, to actually, you know, leverage and to speak. So anyone that wants to speak on social media, find a unique hashtag that can become a body of knowledge that people are going to always go back to. You know, for example, if you are, if you are blessed with messages on, you know, um, on prosperity, just tag it kingdom prosperity, hashtag kingdom prosperity. Let all your message, every single thing you do, let me so I can reach a wider audience. The second thing that I say about communication, let your tweets or your posts, let it be in a communication form. Let it not be just a narrow presentation. Like, you know, when you are doing a presentation, you're not interacting with your presentation. It becomes difficult, all right? Then secondly, just like the question you asked that, I mean, um, um, Excellency Allah Shunde asked, one of the reasons why people don't get other people, people don't um, retweet you or follow you because you have not retweeted other people. So this is strategy. With you, if you retweeted 10 people, right, and you are a follower with 10 people, when you post, 10 people, those 10 people, by default, we also retweet you. So it's about amplification. So it's about ensuring that you are able to amplify what you want to do. Then after my one minute is almost gone in the fourth one. The fourth one, which was commerce. Commerce, you know, somebody might say, oh, you're talking about money here. Let me tell you, the social media is one of the greatest platforms to form, platform, to form kingdom mandates. Anybody cannot say today, I'm broke. If you have a gospel, if you have a message, you can leverage social media. If your message is, if it resonates with people, I mean, please get some serious funding for his project. Why? Because people want to even fund what you are driving. They are, they are seated. You just need to away from anybody. That was old time. In this time, you are an intelligent tweet away from anybody. Right. So, I mean, and that's what I want to say. And the final thing I want to say when it comes to the, the, my, the slide that I presented, there are four things that social media must help us to do. Number one, it must help us to be visible. It must help us to be relevant. We must be accountable and we must be relevant. Those are the four principles that must guide our presence on social media. We must ensure we are visible. That's what social media is for. We must be relevant. Relevance is why a lot of people don't get following your content don't get reshared, you must be relevant. And one of the ways to be relevant is also follow trend. It does call, you know, riding on waves. You must learn to ride on waves in order for you to be able to actually catch on and be able to speak, you know, and get your own message into the, into the main frame. So uh, on this note, and of course, the last thing is being accountable. One of the things social media has also done for the kingdom is even as a man of God, you know you have to be accountable. Otherwise, somebody is going to come back to you and say, guy, what you are saying, I'm not sure. I mean, that's happening in our country, Nigeria. If you do anything in church, uh, Excellency. I'm not sure. You can be sure on that Sunday or Monday, someone will really say he has said that it's not working. So, social media leverage it to amplify the gospel of Christ. Thank you very much for this. Thank you, sir. I think uh, one of the reasons I think I gave you grace is because uh, you, you only spoke 10 minutes, I think, during your presentation. So, I give you grace. So, lastly, uh, Excellency. Ram and Excellency Ayanda, strictly two minutes, your final words about how do we get interaction and how do we make our content grow quick? Strictly two minutes. I'll start with you, Excellency Ram, sitting in Kenya. If you may say two minutes, that's now, your final words. Um, uh, you, your voice broke a bit. Uh, so what, what is the question again, Mr. Musa? Your the question. You, you're broken, yeah. Yes, the question was the interaction. Why is it that we do not interact with the content, even within the church? We don't interact with Christian content still. And probably sub to that, you can also give a one tip 
on how one person can grow their content to make it trend or make it go viral. All right, thank you, thank you. Um, I, I thank God that we are having this discussion. One thing that I realized about um, social media and uh, some of our Christian uh, brothers and sisters is that it is true. We sometimes do not promote one another. And this is something that I have spoken about in so many fora. We need to embrace the fact that, you know what, just as somebody else who is a secular artist is trending and is, and is being promoted by out, uh, outside people, we can also make our own person in our church also trend because somebody supported that person who you know of, who is a media personality, who is a public figure. Somebody is supporting them. Are you supporting your own people within your church? Those who are singing, are you supporting them? Those who are doing arts, those who are creatives, are you supporting them? Those who are, who are doing fashion, those who are having their businesses, they post them on their statuses are you supporting them are you sharing them we need as a church to promote brotherhood we be our brother's keeper so that if somebody's business fails we don't we, we do not say that you know what it was his business it's none of my business we should not be like cain that when when god asks ask cain why is your brother where is your brother cain asks i'm you know uh, uh, am i his keeper am i his keeper we need to embrace each other so i believe that that's a very valid point that we need to understand um secondly um yes we have platforms, and I love the fact that uh, one of us asked that particular question. I can't remember who. Yes, we have platforms that we can use to promote our own content. The platform is there that speakers, men of God, can use to promote. Go to Facebook. If you use to Facebook, it's a great platform where you can connect with your, with your target audience. You can use this to promote pictures, photos, a variety of content. Use that, share links, whether the, the, the links are from different platforms, use that. News articles, share them. Make your own Facebook pages. If at all you, are a, you, you, you have Facebook groups, make them, come up with them. Go to Twitter. One thing about Twitter is there uh, is a restriction in terms of the number of characters that are there. I think, I believe it's about 280 character limitation that is there, if I'm not wrong. So go to Twitter, make a hashtag, use it, be, con be clear and concise, be precise with your content, share photos, videos, and links on your sites. It will help you. Go to TikTok, make short videos. I have seen clips of, of, of uh, Dr. The Late Miles Monroe. Why can't we have clips of our own people trending on Twitter and many others? Short clips, two minute, 30 second videos that we can share on our statuses. Go to WhatsApp, share clips of your preacher talking in church and do something. Go to TikTok, make, make funny videos because at the end of the day, even the word of God has something that we can, we can make humor out of. Go to YouTube, get your clips here there. And of course, uh, one, one more thing that I want to add up is we can also use money to promote our content. Just go there, boost your clips, boost your items, and it will reach so many people. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I think uh, your, your message summed up is take advantage of each platform and use it to the best that it can offer you. Thank you. That is well received. Uh, last but certainly not least, Excellency Miss. I under your two minutes <laughs> principles. You don't have to give examples, just the principles. Your two minutes starts now. Thank you so much, Your Excellency Program Director. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit worried. My network seems to be doing whatever. <laughs> yeah, I would like to, you know, just in conclusion, uh, thank you so much for this conversation. I just want to share this slide and I hope that it actually works. Um, just to answer, first of all, uh, the, uh, the, the question, what, uh, what, what sort of tooling can we use um, in order to be effective? Um, this is the statistic and this is take taken from Strata uh, Insights. If you, can, if you can follow their page and just follow them, you'll be able to keep abreast with regards to social media and the trends. So YouTube, I want to encourage the church, you know, to really get acquainted with YouTube. Um, and uh, let, I think the previous speaker also said, let's boost our posts. 
And um, to answer then your question as well as answer the, the, the question around what kind of tooling can we use, uh, program director, it's to say that social capital. As a church, we have to be very intentional in terms of how we build our audiences. You know, audiences are not built on social media. Social media is a supportive tool, you know, to, to, to support the message that we have. We have got to build um, a social capital. How do we build Build the social capital. We've got to put out messages out there uh, that are sustainable. And by sustainable, I mean that our social media presence must be founded on solid branding. Ah, oh, you know, the issue of branding is such a big thing. Our branding must be solid uh, and our message must transcend uh, your excellencies, emotion and sensation. And we have to be unapologetic about who we are. Knowledge is good. The pursuit of knowledge is even better. But we have to understand that as a church and as a body, we have a master and our duty is to lift him up. And we know that when we lift him up, he is the one that is able to draw all men unto him. I think that's where I'll leave it your excellencies thank you so much thank you excellency accurate that was exactly two minutes <laughs> so uh, thank you so much uh, we we have reached the the end of our program but maybe before i just before we we, we get to close we have just a couple we will get uh, dr eric aja who will quickly do the offering for us excellency if you are um Online, please unmute yourself and go ahead. I don't seem to see. I don't seem to see Dr. Uh, Aja online. I don't seem to see Dr. Arda online, but that's okay. I think uh, the 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 details are on the screen, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, different parts of the world. And I think uh, if 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 you want to give to this vision and the impact that it has uh, globally, it's quite important when you study the book of Luke, uh, chapter number eight, uh, you will understand that there were a couple of people that gave into the ministry of Jesus because of especially what he was doing in the lives of many. And I think this gives us an example of how he does that. If you study from the third verse, the Bible says, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod, Stuart, and Susanna, and many others which ministered unto him of their substance. That means sometimes there are other people that are carrying the vision, that are doing the work, and maybe you may not be there physically to do the work, but your substance, your resources can help the vision continue. So with those details on the screen, what it is that the Lord has laid in your heart, uh, we will be very grateful as the Global Fund for Jesus and GBR for us to continue doing that which the Lord has entrusted us to do. With those words, I'm going to quickly move on to Mr. Tato Mashao. If he is uh, on the line, uh, my good sir, quickly give us the announcements and the vote of thanks. Uh, thank you, uh, Program Director. Um, I will proceed to read the announcements, and they are as follows. Next email international session will be held on Thursday, the 28th of July, 2022, from 7 to 9. We'll be using the same platform of Zoom. Please be advised that you can watch all previous GBR international online sessions on GBR website www.globalbusinessroundtable.com as well as on YouTube. The 10th GBR Philia Summit held on the 13th of August 2022 in Niger under the theme Rising in a Pandemic, pandemic World. For more information, kindly contact Ms. Sarah Muni at sarah at globalbusinessroundtable.com. A woman of character leadership would like to invite you to the 2022 Walk Summit taking place from the 2nd to the 3rd of September in Tanzania. The summit is rise and build a future for the next generation. 
Sorry about that. Okay. <clears throat> For more information, can you come to me? Pilile at globalbusinessroundtable.com. You are all invited to register in the Global Business Roundtable Network by accessing the GBR website, www.global.com. GBR and GFFJ leadership requests all GBR members and GFFJ ambassadors to set aside every Wednesday from 6 to 6, from January to November as a day of prayer and fasting. So you're invited to join the GBR 24-hour prayer network. For more information on how to join and be allocated a slot, can you contact Pastor Olwadomi or a bungee at Olwadomi at globalbusinessroundtable.com or Ms. Siska Arlington on Siska at globalbusinessroundtable.com. I would like to take this opportunity to, to give gratitude to uh, our participants. Uh, I believe that uh, the presentation was great. First and foremost, our own for the program director, and also like to thank uh, Madam Jane Egbo for putting in the word of prayer. I would also like to thank the panelists today, Mr. Tayo. Olusunde from Nigeria, Ms. Ayanda Nenemba uh, from South Africa, Mr. M. Kuku from Kenya. And, uh, and I'll also like to thank uh, the program director for uh, Dr. Aja in uh, conducting the offering. And also I would like to thank in advance Ms. Comfort Njaki. Kenya, as uh, she will be closing in a word of prayer for us. And I would like to thank all the persons that have attended this uh, session, that have given time to attend the session. We really appreciate you and uh, thanks for being Thank you very much. Uh, over to you, Master Musa. Thank you, sir. And I think as, as aforementioned, that is going to be the last item uh, for that is going to be the last item for our session tonight. So if you may, Excellency, Miss Comfort Njagi in Kenya, if you may just uh, close for us in prayer, we'll be most grateful. Wow, well, thank you very much, our program director, Mr. Tayo, our speaker, Madam Ayanda, and our brother from home, Aguko. Musa, you have done a very good and recommendable job. Masha, thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm extremely blessed. And maybe before I pray, I want to appreciate the, 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 the talk today. It's amazing. I didn't know the power of media until I until my Facebook page was hacked two weeks ago. And there's a lot of noise, but I'm no longer, I'm not in the social media space. And I believe those who know me, um, I, I'm just, I, I'm, I speak hope every time on my Facebook page. I didn't know that it affected people. And so thank you very much. I believe this needs to be communicated again and again. And my prayer is that the church to own up, you can be sure this is not very comfortable to some church goers. And I believe today is very educative team. Kenya is quite late. I'm a bit dozy. So I want just to go ahead and make this prayer. Everlasting Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we want to say thank you tonight because of giving such a, 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 such a time, dear loving Father. We all believe that Almighty God, through the digital space, the social media power, the world has just become a global village. And we are able to communicate with each other, dear loving Father out of the conversation and the talk we've encountered and had today, we believe almighty God, this is the greatest tool that is shaping our generation, almighty God. We know that Jehovah, we are able to reach even the young of the youngest, dear father with good news. And this is our prayer that almighty God, you also make the church own up the medium mountain that we may continue dear father to impact more and more Jehovah. 
we thank you because the greater mission is still um, still stands in Acts chapter one verses eight that we shall go to we shall start with Jerusalem we go to Judea Samaria and the uttermost part of the world we thank you Lord that we don't even sometimes need to go by air or by road to reach the good news dear Father or to take the good news we have a vehicle by the name social media, oh God. We pray that you may enlighten the church and you make the church know that we are in a different dispensation where God is using all manner of media that the truth may spread across the nations of the world. We pray tonight that in the name of Jesus that you have given Global Business Roundtable a space and a voice in this time, dear Lord, that we shall be able, Jehovah, to equip the nations of the earth with the knowledge needful to impact the world in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the program director and, of, and, and also the team that have spoken. I pray that you may sharpen and, and uh, magnify their voices, dear Father, that you may continue to become instruments of knowledge in the name of Jesus. We want to bless your holy name and to honor you, O oh God, because we know you are part of whatever is happening in our days. We want to thank you, Father Lord, even for the bigger agenda and mission of the Global Business Roundtable. We pray that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will continue to multiply the numbers, that the mandate of this organization will come to pass, dear loving Father. We mentioned the convener, the, prof, the, 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 the visionary, and the president, uh, Papa Museleku, dear Lord, tonight in the name of Jesus. Continue to increase him with wisdom and honor, dear Father. Thank you for the grace that you have given him globally. And thank you for the voice that you have given him, dear Father. And having laid a foundation that has Christ, Lord, we are sure that we can only overcome. We bless you because you are bringing light in the church through this platform. And we are appreciating that we need to dominate all the mountains above Father in the name of Jesus. We give you all the praise because we will not give up sharing the good news, dear Father. We bless you for the victory over this program tonight. And we declare that in the name of Jesus, your name will be mightily glorified across the nations. We thank you, Father, disperse us with your blessing and give us very restful moment tonight. And this we ask together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And all of us say, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Excellency. Uh, we are grateful. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. This was the GBR online session. This was our 96th session. Uh, we pray and hope that you will join us again in the next one. Till we meet again, may the Lord continue to bless you. Good night and God bless. All right.